welcome to the Starry Lemon Lime Friday Night Rivals preview show. I'm joined alongside Brielle Berry right here. Tonight we have two teams that are looking to keep the momentum going from their week one wins in Maroa, Forsyth, and Auburn. And Auburn playing host to Maroa Forsyth in this one tonight. The Trojans did fall a year ago to Maroa in week two of the regular season, 37 to 13, but are looking to turn it around this year. I'm joined by Paul Wapple and AJ Gersh at Auburn High School, and it's a great night for some high school football. Now we are expecting to hoop to have a good game tonight, so let's kind of talk about the Auburn Trojans and this 2023 squad. Paul, what are you expecting from this Auburn team tonight? Auburn's going to have to be tough. They're going to have to play, you know, air-free football. Maroa Forsyth is ranked number one in the state in the Class 2A poll this week. They have 19 of 22 player starters back. Talon Kern's going to have to big night. Have to a big night, I think, for Auburn a quarterback. And AJ, what are your thoughts on tonight? Well, Kern had a big night last week against New Berlin. We'll talk a little bit more about that as the night goes on. But he's going to need to air it out and make no mistakes against this mighty Moreau Foresight defense tonight. Uh, also, they'll have to establish a little bit of the run game as well. Uh, I know they got a young squad on that front, but that's what they got to do if they're looking to get the dub here in Auburn. And Auburn head coach Ryan Gardner is in his third year as the leader of the Trojans. I spoke with Gardner this week ahead of tonight's game, and I asked him um, what he liked from his team in week one. First of all, that was one of the hottest experiences I've had like playing, coaching. I've been coaching for 10 years now. That was like the hottest first half I've ever been a part of. As far as week one goes, we got a win, <laughs> and really that's all that matters. We made it out with a win. I really liked the way our kids responded. They, we, they were 0 for 6 on fourth down. Our defense you know, made stops when it mattered. Um, our offense made plays when it mattered. So um, – I was proud of our kids for despite all of the other things happening that throughout the week and through that game, our kids responded when it mattered most. We're expecting to have a good game tonight. As we mentioned, Royal Forsyth, very good team. They were one win away from appearing in the state championship a year ago. But this 2023 squad is a different team. Paul. What can we expect from this Moroa team this year? Well, Unbelievable. It seems like he's been at Moroa Forsyth 15 years, but and I say that in the most complimentary way. Great quarterback. Coach, uh, as coach said, if he was six foot, six foot one, he'd have Division One offers. He's a tremendous player. He'll go down as one of the best, if not the best player in uh, Moroa Forsyth football history. Yeah, AJ. It's very simple. They're going to run it. They're going to gun it. And it all starts with Maurer. He can do it really everything with the football. He's such a talented kid. He's so fast. But there's also a couple of other players in this squad that we're going to be looking out for as well. they got to have a heck of a running back uh, in, in Andre uh, Harden. And he's fantastic, fast, strong. They're going to literally have to come out the gates so fast and once they do uh it, it's going to be very tough for this Auburn Trojan team yeah of course and when I spoke to coach coach this week about this year's team and their playoff loss to Tri-Valley last year I asked him if it's been on the players minds if it's been on his mind and you know how they uh, are looking to move forward we don't talk about it a lot but I think our players know and uh you know most teams would be happy to have a semi-final appearance uh finish their season 12 and 1 but it's just not what we do so if those kids don't play a state championship game their expectations have been not met so i'd like to start by focusing um on the defensive line on of auburn when i spoke with head coach ryan gardner last week he said the one thing he really wanted to credit was his defensive line in week one versus new berlin new berlin was 0 for 6 on fourth down so he really gave a lot of credit to his defense um now there are there any specific guys that you um have your eyes on tonight obviously talon kern had a really good stat line last week 27 for 36 321 yards um do you see a similar stat line ahead of him for tonight's game against a tough team like moroa there's a lot of players to keep our eye on for these Auburn Trojans. A lot of the seniors who are going to be catching the ball here tonight. Of course, you got Donardo, you got Grant Dobson, the tight end, who uh, we were talking to some Auburn Trojans a little bit earlier, saying you got to keep an eye out for Dobson. He's just fantastic, all conference sort of player. And they got a lot of guys who could really stretch the field as well. Uh, yeah, if I was going to be a betting man on that, I would say Talon Kern could potentially have a very similar game that to last week uh, in New Berlin. Yeah, Sawyer Smith, another good receiver, and you were talking about uh, Clayton Donardo, his dad, Zach, was an all-stater back in the 90s. I remember covering him. That's how old I am, but uh, all in the bloodlines. But uh, they, Auburn has some talented people at the skills positions, no doubt. 
And sticking with the Auburn players, I had a chance to speak with a few of them at this week's practice and ask them what they like from their team in week one and what it means to them to be back on Friday Night Rivals. I got things to work on, keep improving each week, but overall, first week it was, it was decent. We definitely can get better. We're all pretty excited. It's always fun knowing the game's going to be on television. We go out there trying to do our best. We played good. We played our hearts out for how hot it was, and I think we'll continue to take steps forward every game. Dermenton, son of Jeff and Missy Mitchell. Tucker is also the manager for the football team. Let's focus in on a few players from a row of four sites that are already making a major impact on the field this year. Key players from last year. Two of the kids on my mind at the, for today's game, Friday Night Rivals matchup, Caden Moore and Andre Harper. You guys have anything to say about those guys? Andre Harden, I mean, he is quite the running back. And what's difficult about this is he didn't get many touches last season. Of course, Aiden Riser was a fantastic player here at Morrell Forsyth. And uh, Jacob Blunk, I believe, also got a ton of carries last season as well. Uh, Harden only got four carries last year. He had 13 for 80 yards and a touchdown just in week one alone. Yeah, you got Zane Giles, you got Mitch Williams, the threats at the wide receiver. Gant Smith, the tight end. Morrell Forsyth has a lot of threats on offense. Mm -hmm. And we actually talked to both Caden and Andre this week and what they thought about that week one game and what their hopes are for the rest of the season. Uh, I was really proud of myself, but especially the team with it. Supposed to start at eight, ended up starting at three or ten thirty. So it was hard to stay locked in, but we did it. So I'm proud of us. I won a state championship. I mean, that's the goal here every year. We know that here at Moreau, it's accomplishable every year. State. Anything to add on to that? We're gonna be champions. <laughs> We will have much more coming up on the Starry Lemon Line preview show, but before we go to break, meteorologist Darren Leeds will join us for the check of the forecast. And it is a great night out here in Auburn right now. Temperature is much better than we had out there for last week, and it is shaping up to be a pretty nice evening. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up after this break. Graphics or not. If y'all can pull up graphics, let somebody know. Well, I don't even know if they can pull up graphics. Like, no one's answering me. But I can do as long as you need. Well, I don't have an earpiece. I know, but how are they going to let me know? I will let you know. <clears throat> All right. Grant Dobson, son of Tony and Danielle Dobson, and, and Michael what? and Emily Schumer. So you can talk. I can just it All right, can we pull up graphics from the weather computer? Yes or no? Juan Giron. All right, perfect. Romero and Lourdes Giron. All right.
your storm team weather with meteorologist Darren Leeds. Hey, and Jackie Richmond. Well, it is an absolutely picture-perfect evening for some Friday Night Rivals football here in Auburn. We've got Moreau Forsyth in town, which you probably already know, but conditions much different from what we had out there last week with our temperatures were in the 90s. Our heat index values were 115 degrees. Everyone was sweating bullets out there, and even a number of football games managed to get canceled due to the heat and then due to those storms that came through. Like I said, a much different situation out here this evening. Calm, cooler weather here, and again, perfect weather for some Friday night football. Our temperatures today peaked right around those lower 80s, and take a look at what we've got out there currently we're already still seeing some upper 70s down around Litchfield, Bloomington, Watsika and Danville still the rest of us looking at our numbers right around that 80 degree mark give or take winds are very light out here this evening so don't expect those to play too much of a factor in the passing kicking or the punting game but it does look like we're going to still look at some very nice calm winds heading into the evening forecast and not really making it feel a whole lot cooler or a whole lot warmer nothing to really show off on our radar and satellites in fact we are just looking at blue skies and the setting sun off to the west right now Again, perfect conditions out there. Couldn't really ask for anything more. Not too warm, not too cool, but temperatures are just about perfect. As we're getting a little bit closer to the kickoff, we are going to be seeing those numbers drop down into those upper 70s, and then things kind of starting to cool off a little bit more once we lose the heating from the sun. Halftime, I've got our numbers just above 70, and by the time we're heading into about the fourth quarter, we should be looking at some of those temperatures in the upper 60s. But again, still nice for maybe a little bit of a sweatshirt and you could still probably pull off some shorts for this point here in the year. Taking a look at what we're going to be seeing out there for tomorrow's forecast. Temperatures back warmer. We're going to be seeing some mid and upper 80s. Winds getting a little bit more gusty as we're heading into our Saturday, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then we do see the warm air, the humid air start to work its way back in. Temperatures are going to be in those upper 80s. Probably going to feel like we're around 90 degrees as that humidity starts to tick up a little bit more. But again, that's not coming our way until we're getting into that weekend forecast but for the time being it still looks like just some picture perfect weather out here for some Friday night football we'll take another look at that forecast coming up here in a little bit but for now I'm going to throw things back to Dante and Brielle guys Thanks, Darren. Taking a look at this matchup between the Trojans of Moreau Foresight and the Trojans of Auburn. Let's go through and give our prediction for tonight's Friday Night Rivals showdown. Paul, what do you think tonight? I think Moreau Foresight is so deep. Like I said, 19 20 starters back. I think Moreau Foresight wins this game. I hope it's closer than I think it might be. AJ? I'm going to call here on this from Moreau Foresight. Really looking like a state championship contender this season. I think they win by two touchdowns. Okay. Bria, what do you think? So for me, I'm hoping that Auburn can keep it competitive in the first quarter or till halftime. I think it's more so going to be the first quarter. I'm going to give a score prediction. I think it's going to be Maroa 49, Auburn 14, but hopefully competitive in the first quarter of play. Okay, well, I guess hopefully we don't become a meme because of this, but I think we're going to go with a clean sweep. I'm going to take Maroa Foresight. I love this team this year. We talked about that talent. You have Caden Moore back at the quarterback position. I mean, Coach talked about this week one of the best players to ever come through this Trojans team so I'm really excited to see what they have tonight I think they win maybe by a couple touchdowns but I think Auburn has a good team this year they have a different team this year they're going to be a team we probably see in the playoffs later on the year I want to throw something out before the game hopefully nobody at Moreau is watching this but before the game I was told we're going to see a different playbook from Auburn today we're going to see a different playbook. Keep an eye out on that. So I think they're going to throw something at evening, uh, Moreau Foresight that they just haven't Michael seen Pot, yet this year. Memorial football field. It's going to take something to pull off the upset, so maybe that's official. what they're going to do. We'll it's see how it goes. Do you have to to I want to say 41-27. Okay. Paul? 35-14. Okay. okay. So let's quickly take a look at a few different matchups around the area. Paul, are there any matchups tonight that you think fans should kind of keep their eye out? Yeah, you know, for week two, I think it's a pretty big game. Decatur MacArthur 1-0 at Jacksonville 1-0. Both teams scored 50 points last week. MacArthur beat Southeast 50 to nothing. Um, uh, Jacksonville won. 
51 to 6 against Eisenhower. Uh, Cameron Mitchell is a ton for Jacksonville. It's in Jacksonville tonight. I think that's a big Central State 8 game, all things considered, for a week two game. Yeah, and we're going to quickly send it over as the, they play the national anthem here at Michael J. Potts. Now, we got Paul's kind of take four games in the area to watch tonight. AJ, what games do you have your eye on? Well, I got my eye on SHG tonight, taking on Normal University High School. It's an interesting matchup because last week, SHG, new head coach John Allison, 54 to 14 against Normal Community. Now, they are 7A teams. So and they're this, very good. This is going to be a real test. We're going to really see who SHG is this week, a new younger team. A lot of their starters have graduated and moved on, as Ken Leonard has also moved on. Uh, but this will be a real test to see where the Cyclones stand in the Central State 8. And I know uh, head coach John Allison tonight, not every game's a must-win, but I would say this game <laughs> might be the start of a must-win schedule for the Cyclones. Uh, especially because the Central State 8, I know you got Rochester, Glenwood, Jacksonville still on the schedule. So SHG, Normal U, taking on uh, you know, tonight a big matchup of uh, two teams that Normal won their first game, so you can't count them out either. Mm -hmm. That's a good pick, AJ. Now, Dante, moving over to the east side, are there any games you kind of are keeping an eye out for? Yeah, one game that I really keep an eye on this week, it's probably one of the best games in the area over in that Champaign area, is St. Joseph Ogden versus Solono Unity. Two really good teams. Two teams we're going to see in the playoffs come the end of the season, I have no doubt about that. Last week, St. Joseph Ogden beat Monticello. It was a little bit of a close game in the beginning, but after that game was delayed, St. Joseph Ogden ran away with that. They are really good on both sides of the ball. I know they're talented at the quarterback position. Their wide receiver groups and other special groups, so that's one I'm really keeping an eye on. And Tolono Unity, I believe last year they only lost one game. So they're, they're, they're a team to, that can create some real damage come the end of this season. So we're getting closer and closer to kickoff between Moreau, Forsyth, and Auburn. Well, now we will let Paul and AJ head up to booth, head up to the booth to get ready. We'll be right back on the Starry pregame on the Starry Lemon Line pregame show.
manager positions to students at their high school to help with various tasks on the field like filling water bottles, helping with film, or even weekly paperwork. But for the Auburn Trojans, their team managers mean more to the group than just a spot at the bottom of the roster. The Auburn football team has two managers a part of their roster, senior Tucker Mitten and junior Brady Franzen. The two wanted to join the team because of their love for football and wanting to join the team atmosphere at Auburn. The reason why I became a team manager was because I love the sport of football. I would go home and watch it on TV all the time. And one day in my weights class, I went up to Coach Carter. I said, I love the sport of football, but I'm afraid of getting hurt because and then he asked me that day, how would you like to be the team manager for varsity football? And I said, I would be happy to join because this is a great town, the great people around here. While the two are not involved, what happens between the lines of the football field, they mean a lot more than just a name at the bottom of the roster. They mean a lot. They're here every day, just like we are, getting our water ready, taking care of us. It's just a big part of our team. Uh, pretty important for us. They're doing what they do every day, helping out set up field and give water and all that. And while not every local high school has a team manager, when we spoke to Auburn's Tucker Mitten, he emphasized the importance of every team having one and his role with the Trojans. It's very important because, like, last week we were at New Berlin and it was very hot and a lot of cramps were happening, and, we, and they need water. So we have to be on the sideline getting the waters ready, and then by timeouts we're we're ready to go and we give them their bottles, bottles of water. Not only are the two recognized as great managers on the field for Auburn, but even better classmates and human beings off the field. Oh, their characters are great. It's just some of the best personalities you could ever get and glad to have them on our team. Tucker Minton is one of those seniors being honored tonight, a part of Auburn's Senior Night. When we come back from break, we will take a final look at tonight's Friday Night Rivals matchup between Baroa Foresight and the Auburn Trojans. We'll be right back.
Well, welcome back to the Starry Lemon Line Friday Night Rivals preview show. We are about nine minutes to kick off, so we're getting close to the start of tonight's game. But before we get to that game, Brielle, what are your final you know, points or key emphasis for tonight's game against uh, between Auburn and Emero Forsythe. I think this game is definitely, if Auburn, you know, wants to have a shot of winning this game, I think it's really going to come down to Auburn's defense. Um, I've said it before earlier in the show, I'll say it again. Coach Gardner really preached the defensive line, so I think that's really going to come into play here tonight against a Moreau Forsythe team that can kind of do everything on offense, offensive powerhouse. So I think if Auburn could maybe get a couple key stops early, that might throw Moreau for a little bit of a loop early on. Is there anything that kind of, you know, you're thinking about for tonight's game? You know what I'm thinking about? It's, it's it's not about the players on the field, but it's going to affect the players on the field. The grass seems a little bit long tonight. That may slow some of the guys down. It's something we're going to have to wait and see. And I talked to the players. He, he, he wasn't sure if it's uh, if it's been cut in a couple of weeks. They didn't know. It just felt a little long. That may have an effect, but I'm not sure. We we have a lot of turf fields this year for the Friday Night Rivals uh, preview sh for the show. So we're going to see how that happens tonight. But thank you for joining us for the Starry Lemon Lime preview show. We're going to send it up to Paul and AJ in the booth for Moroa Foresight for Auburn Trojans. Send it up to you guys. You can triple check with Dante, but that's what... Well, Dante was asking me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you, Jeff. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, man. All right. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> We're in Auburn as the Auburn Trojans host the Maroa Forsyth Trojans. Seth Q, Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20, starts now. You're watching Seth Q, Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Good evening and welcome to SEFQ Friday Night Rivals presented by News Channel 20. I'm Paul Wappel alongside News Channel 20's A.J. Gersh. We're in Auburn as the Auburn Trojans host the Maroa Forsyth Trojans in a Sangamo Conference matchup. Week two of the IHSA football season. Beautiful night. A.J., what do you think? Beautiful night for football. Absolutely, Paul. Last week we unfortunately didn't get to broadcast the actual football game because that hot weather turning into lightning strikes, turning into all sorts of a myriad of issues on the weather front. But tonight... Clear, beautiful, can't wait to play some football week two, Paul. Should be a good one. What do you see as the keys to tonight's game? Sep Q is your key to getting a new home loan. Well, for Moreau, a foresight, Paul, it's easy. More, more. He's fantastic. He's been a starter throughout his time at Moreau Foresight. Coach Shasta is saying he's one of the best players to ever put on a Trojan jersey for them. He can run the ball. He could throw the ball. 
He said, Coach said last week when we talked to him, if he was six foot, he would be a D1 prospect. He's just a fantastic player. And then on the other side, here at home in Auburn, if they can establish the run, if they can keep Moreau Forsyth off the field, especially, we know Talon Kern could throw the football. He threw for 300 plus yards last week in their win against New Berlin. And they have a room full of guys, a junior, a sophomore. They're trying to figure out their running back situation. So if they can hit the ground running and keep Moreau Forsyth off of the field tonight, that'll be their path to victory. All right, should be a good game. Moreau Forsyth ranked number one in the Class 2A poll this week. Right now, we're going to turn over to our sideline reporter for tonight, Dante Furco. He has tonight's field conditions brought to you by Brandt Professional Agriculture. Dante? Thank you, Paul. We're down here on Michael J. Potts Memorial Field for tonight's game. We have a great night for football. The weather is looking great. And what's different from last week's Friday Night Rivals matchup to this week, we are playing tonight's game on grass field. We don't have many grass fields this year, a part of the Friday Night Rivals schedule. The grass feels a little long tonight. And that may slow down some players, may give for some comfort on the offensive side of the ball when they are running, but it's something to keep an eye on tonight. Doesn't look like it's been cut in a couple weeks but another big key is last week when we were on turf field you really felt the heat coming off the turf it made things the temperature feel a little bit hotter but this week on the grass it's a nice cool feel feeling less of that heat come off the ground from michael j potts field sending it back up to you paul we'll be back with a kickoff zepq friday night rivals live from auburn stay with us Back to Step Q Friday Night Rivals presented by News Channel 20. Paul Wapel, AJ Gersh, Dante Perko on the sidelines. We are ready for week two of Friday Night Rivals, a battle of the Trojans tonight, AJ. That's right, Sangamo Conference matchup, undefeated matchup, Paul. Beautiful night for football. Two Trojan teams, Auburn playing host to Moreau Foresight tonight. We are just about ready for kickoff. It's been an exciting pregame, and the stands are filled here, Paul. Yes, and what a difference a week makes with the weather. Feels like it's about 100 degrees cooler tonight, doesn't it? <laughs> I feel like that's even an <laughs> understatement, if anything. <laughs> so we are ready 
battle of the Trojans, as I said. The Auburn Trojans, the home team, they have their work cut out for them tonight. Moreau of Forsyth ranked number one in Class 2A this week. They have 19 of 22 starters back. We talked about it on the preview show, AJ, and they've got a ton of people back and some talented people led by players led by quarterback Caden Maurer. Yeah, devastating loss in the state semifinals last year to Tri-Valley. This year, as we were talking to Coach Josh Justice, he was telling us how they feel like they are ready to win it this season and really the window of opportunity here with Caden Maurer, with a couple other their seniors. Now's the time, Paul. That's right. So Auburn will kick off Sawyer Smith We'll do the kicking honors for the Auburn Trojans, the Moroa Forsyth Trojans. will of course, receive on an absolutely gorgeous night, September 1st, 2023. A good crowd on hand as well. Are you ready, AJ? I am absolutely ready. It's looking like the Brian flag is also ready there coming in. All right, and there's tonight's kickoff brought to you by Bridge Care Suites. And the Moroa Forsyth Trojans will start their high-powered offense. See what they do here. We talked about it, led by Caden Maurer, four-year starter, one of the best players ever for Josh, Coach Josh Joseph. That's right, 30 total touchdowns last season, Paul, between throwing the ball, running the ball, receiving even. He was spread wide a couple of times, had just about 300 yards receiving. He could do just a little bit of everything. First and 10 for Moroa Forsyth as we start their first possession. Maurer throws right away, complete. Out to about the 40 yard line is Zane Giles. So big pick up there on first down. And that is a first down for the Moroa Forsyth Trojans. That's a Brant Professional Agriculture first down. Brant Professional Agriculture, one of our first down sponsors all season long. First and 10 for the 39, Maurer rolls. Looking, looking, throws in and out of the hands. Incomplete. Intended receiver, number 11. The Giles. So good coverage by Auburn. Bring up second and 10 for Moreau Forsyth. You have to think that Moreau Forsyth is. Uh, Gonna be throwing the football a lot tonight. You've already seen it so far, haven't even attempted a run. Is here the time that they start to hit it on the ground? We shall see, right? Second and 10, first quarter action just underway in Auburn. Maurer looks to the sidelines for the play. The Trojans, well, Forsyth Trojans in no hurry. Maurer's ready. Harden, Andre Harden in the backfield. Harden gets the carry up the middle, got some room. First down and more as he crosses midfield to the 47 yard line. And that's another Brant Professional Agriculture first down. AJ Gerst, they went to the ground and it worked. They certainly did. Andre Harden here, making it look easy. He only had four carries all of last season. Of course, Aiden Riser was the running back last year for Murrow Forsyth. And a uh, little option play. That one's tough. Maurer on the keeper, and the Auburn defense comes up with a big play there. Good stop. Nothing doing that time for Murrow Forsyth. They lost yardage on the play. A little bit of a misread there for Maurer. Uh, if he handed that one off to Harden, it could have been an easy five-yard pickup, but that was a nice stuff by the defensive line. Second down and long now. Maurer to the air. Goes to the right side. In and out of the hands. Incomplete Zane Giles, the senior intended receiver. Couldn't hang on to it. That'll bring up third and long for Maurer Forsyth. Yeah, nice defense there from 84. He was all over, all over St. Giles on that throw. Third and 14. Brady Boylan with that coverage. Maurer has time, steps up, going to keep it himself, running. Gets some positive yardage to about the 45, but not near enough for the first down. So that'll bring up fourth and still long for the Trojans. That was just a great play call. Coach Gardner calling the DB blitz. Carter Huntley getting in there. 
making the stop after the scramble, and it looks like they're going to go for it here, fourth and nine. Fourth and nine for Marora Forsyth, opening possession of the game. Maurer all alone in the gun. And he punts it, blocked! The Trojans blocked it! Ball is picked up by the Trojans. They're gonna have excellent field position. How about that? So the Auburn special teams comes up big. Number 87 for Auburn with the return there. Evan Anderson, but it was blocked. And that looked like Grant Dobson getting in there, the all-conference first teamer. He was unanimous first team all-conference player. He's a D end, he's a tight end. He could do a bit of everything for the Auburn Trojans, much like Caden Maurer can do a bit of everything Tal for Moreau Forsyth. Talon Kern, the senior quarterback for Auburn. First and 10 for the Auburn Trojans from their own 41. Kern throws, complete, across the, to the 46-yard line. The Trojans pick up some good yardage there. Sawyer Smith, the receiver, the senior, bring up second and four for the home team. Nice, nice spin move there from Smith. Talon Kern, we talked about it, 300 yards passing last week against New Berlin, back to throw again. Throws, and it's complete, just short of midfield. Carter Hunley, the junior, with the reception. Making plays on offense and defense. Had that big stop on Caden Marr, and then take a look at that play action read right back to him. So it'll be third and one, third and a long one for Auburn. Kern all alone. Throws complete. Not sure if he had a first step. Boy, he was hit hard. Hunley was. Carter Hunley hit hard by the Trojans of Moore Forsyth. And they're signaling it will so be a first down. They give him first down. That's a brand professional agriculture first down for the Auburn Trojans. I wasn't sure he had it, but he got it. And Auburn is moving. Can't write up any better of a start here if I'm Coach Gardner. Coach Ryan Gardner, third year for Auburn. His Trojans made the playoffs last year. He said this year the goal is to get to the playoffs and win a game in the playoffs. Certainly a doable thing here. This Auburn Trojan team is quite talented as we've already seen so far through the first quarter. High snap on first down. Kern keeps it. Gets to the 45-yard line of Moroa Forsyth. Bring up about second and six for the Auburn Trojans. And we talked about it, AJ, uh, the Auburn Trojans have to keep keep the ball away from Raw Forsyth. Uh, so far, obviously very early, but they've got the ball and Raw Forsyth didn't score, so. Slow first downs will be the name of the game if I'm Auburn. You gotta call a couple of runs, although we were talking to some Auburn players on the sideline before the game who told us that's not quite the plan. They want Kern to air it out. They have a couple of young guys in there at halfback, Caden Venrick and Evan Kessler. They're still trying to figure out their running back room situation. They're looking to pass a lot tonight, but drive quickly. Second and six, look at that. A little trickery, Sawyer Smith. Didn't work, lost yardage on the play. Thought it might develop into some positive yardage. It does not, the Royal Forsyth defense right there, so. Yeah, Caden Marr, there he is again. We're gonna be calling his name a lot tonight. Just absolutely swallowed in the backfield. Nice play. 5'7", 140 pounds. He is solid, Cade Bauer. Incredible. 7.02 to go, first quarter. Third and 10 for Auburn. Kern looks to throw, in trouble, gets away. Scrambling now, keeps it on his feet. Gets to about the 44 yard line. That'll bring up fourth down and about six. Let's see if Auburn goes for it or they... And looks like they're going to quickly come to the line and go for it, although they could punt here. Keep an eye out. Could try to get the... It's actually fourth and five, so they could try to get the Moroa Forsyth Trojans. Off Kern is going to throw. Steps up, in trouble, rolling. Still on his feet. Got a wide open man, caught! 
at the 29-yard line. Nobody had him, and that's a first down. How about that? How about that? Uh, Brand Professor Agriculture first down is number 84. Brady Boylan comes up big. After the pass rush, they brought everybody just leaving Boylan wide open. What a find from Kern. Kern looks to throw again. Goes back the other way. Tough to do that. And it is picked off. Picked off by number 25. And that stops that drive. Brady Larson comes up big. And A.J. Gersh, Adam Anderson's not here tonight. He always talks about that. And everybody knows one of the toughest things to do is to throw back the other way when you're a quarterback. Especially tough, when tough you're way. scrambling out of the pocket the other direction. Paul. So the Moroa Forsyth Trojans come up with a turnover. And a huge one at that. On their just shy of the, let's call it their 15-yard line, first and 10 for Caden Maurer and the Moroa Forsyth Trojans. Handoff this time. Look at that. Big gainer there for Braxton Mitchell. Gets about eight on the play. He just barrels his way up. Mitchell, 5'7", 143-pound senior. Check that. Harden. Keeps it himself, Maurer does. Takes about three or four Auburn players to stop him. Let's go down, check in with Dante Perko for the CASCOM sideline report. CASCOM keeping you connected. Dante? Thank you, Paul. I'm here recording by Bay of SEFQ. Welcome to Friday Night Rivals. I wanted to ask how important is it for SEFQ to partner up with Friday Night Rivals at, on Friday Night Football? Oh, SEFQ loves to support its communities any way we can. Awesome. And then I also want to ask, what, what do you guys have going on right now with Seth Q, whatever you're doing? Sure. Uh, we have a checking promotion that goes on to the end of the year. You can get up to $175 cash back. So come see us and open a checking account. Awesome. Building off that, is there anything yeah. else in the future we can expect from Seth Q that you guys have planned that people may, uh, may want to keep their eye out for? Absolutely. We are a sponsor of uh, the Girl Scouts event coming up on seven, September 14th, Cookies and Cocktails. So we're a big sponsor of that, and we love supporting our communities. Awesome. Perfect. That is Courtney Bovey of Seth Q, sending it back up to you guys in the studio. All right. Thanks, Dante. So Mora Forsyth, flag thrown on that play. Got a personal foul against the Auburn Trojans, and that'll move it fifth to change 15 yards. That's a first down, a Brant Professional Agriculture first down. So tough, tough penalty there against Auburn. Yeah, that's not what you want if you're Auburn. If you're going to win this game, if you're the Trojans in blue tonight, you're going to have to play a clean game. They drew a lot of penalties last week as well. They're going to have to keep that laundry off the field. Maurer keeps it on first down, has some room, breaks a tackle. Gets out to the down to the 44-yard line. Hard five-yard turn there. Make it second down and five for Marora Forsyth. Scoreless here, 432 left in the first quarter. Pretty quick first quarter so far. That's right, Brent Dobson running all around the field to make that tackle. Bauer steps up, looks to throw, gets back. He is sacked at the 46-yard line of Auburn. That's and Dobson again. Dobson is a ton. And that's a big play there for the Auburn defense. Absolutely. He has just been a dominant force for the Trojans last season, this year already. He's making plays. Also, there's Sawyer Smith in on that sack as well. Third and long now for Moore Forsyth. Maurer hands off. There goes Harden. Wow. How about that on third and long? And now it's fourth and short after that big run by Harden. Fourth and two, they're going to call it. Maurer gives to Harden again. Harden, did he? Didn't get it. Did he get it? Let's see. First down. Moran Forsyth gets a first down. That's a Brant Professor Agriculture first down. He needed every inch of that carry. Caden Fenrick, that was just a dog play. Absolutely bottling him up. Yeah, he got the first down. 
But if I'm Caden Vemrick and I'm Ryan Gardner there on Auburn sideline, I'm saying, okay, guys, let's play with that sort of mentality here tonight for the rest of the game. And they're bringing out well, the sticks. Well, I apologize. They're going to, yeah. The one official had signaled first down. Let's see. And it is a first down for Mora Forsyth. So Mora Forsyth keeps this drive alive after the interception earlier in the quarter. First and 10 from the 30. Maurer looks left, complete, still going, and down to about the 28 yard line. Mitch Williams, six foot, 161 pound junior. And he's shifty. Mitch Williams, while we were down on the sidelines with Dante, had another great first down. They love to throw these screen passes to Williams and just let him work his magic. He can absolutely gain those yards after the catch if you get him in the bubble. Mauer hands off to Harden. Tripped up. Gets to about the 27 yard line. Gain of about three on the play. And they're looking to really establish the run. I'm not saying I'm surprised here, Paul, that they're running so much early, but thus far on this drive, it's worked for them. See if they keep it up to try to chew this clock as they're streaking towards the end zone. 234 left in the first. Maurer left complete to Mitchell. Out of bounds. See where they mark this one. Here's the replay. It's a nice little screen pass and great block from Williams as well. So second down and five for Marora Forsyth. No score here in the first quarter. Maurer has Harden in the backfield. Maurer going to keep it. No, Harden had it. Fooled me. Fooled a lot of people still on his feet inside the 10 yard line. They'll move the chains and that's another first down of Brant Professional Agriculture. First down for Marora Forsyth. The visiting Trojans are on the move, AJ, and they're quickly back at the line. That's right. Mauer, high snap, keeps it. Nope, gives to Harden. Harden is in for the touchdown. And we want to thank Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport. They are our touchdown sponsor this season. So six to nothing. Moore Forsyth gets on the board first. What a run. What a drive by Andre Harden. You saw him once he got some room in the backfield. Great blocking, great presence by the O-line of Moreau Forsyth. And once he found a hole, he was home free the entire 100 yards on this field here so far. He just had four carries last year. Two touchdowns, 80 yards, game one alone. Here he is with another one tonight. Noah Luther, number 42, the kicker for Moreau Forsyth, one of the best in the state. Blocked. I must have jinxed him. Extra point attempt is blocked. And that's the second block of the night on the special teams play there by Grant Dobson. And that could be a big, big play. We're going to take a break. We're watch you're watching SEPQ Friday Night Rivals on CW23. Back with more from Auburn in just a minute. Thank you, Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. We're in Auburn. The Auburn Trojans taking on the Merola Forsyth Trojans. A Sangamo Conference showdown. Six to nothing. Merola Forsyth gets on the board with 2.16 to go in the first quarter on the touchdown run. The extra point attempt was blocked. And the Auburn Trojans will get the ball back. So 
Moral Forsythe took advantage of that turnover. Absolutely, and Andre Harden is the real deal. They've given him the spotlight here as we've started this young season just through two weeks. He already has three touchdowns. He was behind two seniors last year, Paul. Jacob Blunk and Aiden Reiser had 200 carries between the two. Harden just had four. He's been showing out here tonight so far. So it hasn't been Caden Maurer. It's been on the ground through Harden. Now we'll see how Auburn responds. Noah Luther, I started to mention, one of the best kickers in the area and in the state. His coach says when all is said and done, he might be the team's all school's all-time leading scorer when his career's done. We'll see. He's got a, he can boom it. Luther with the kick, and that is a kickoff brought to you by Bridge Care Suites. And Auburn with a pretty good return there out to about the 22-yard line. Noah Hunley with the return. Let's go down for Cascom sideline report with Dante. Cascom keeping you connected. Thank you, Paul. If you tuned into the pregame show, you may have noticed that behind us that the Auburn Trojans were honoring their seniors a part of senior night early on in the season. Usually you see senior nights towards the end of the season, the last home game, but Auburn decided to move their senior night up to accommodate a player on the team whose family member was sick. They wanted to make sure that everybody in the community could celebrate that player and that all of the family could be there. You may notice on the field during this game, there are ribbons to commemorate that cancer. So something to keep an eye on today, something they were honoring and making sure happened uh, for today's senior game. Send it back up to you guys in the booth. All right. Thank you, Dante. Appreciate that. First and 10 for the Trojans on Auburn Trojans on first down. Gets out to about the 26-yard line, and Carter Huntley, and there you see the ribbon that Dante was talking about. Ribbons painted on the 20-yard line here tonight to honor one of the players' family members. Second and eight. Kern. Oh, overthrows. Tended receiver was Clayton DiNardo, the senior. A little too much air in that one. So yeah. it'll be third and eight for Auburn. Just didn't read the defense correctly. Thought that he was going to have a guy on man. And, and they were clouding it up in the zone there on the left side of the field. Six to nothing. Moreau Forsyth, in case you just joined us. On third and eight. Let's see what Auburn does. Kern's going to throw again. Got his man this time, but... Nothing doing there after the catch. Grant Dobson, the big receiver, but we're all Forsyth right there to stop that one. So that'll bring up fourth down in a punting situation for the Auburn Trojans. Yeah, nice play here by the sophomore, Ryan Shepard, number two. He's a small guy comparatively to uh, Dobson there, but he's able to wrap him up and bring him down. That's a textbook tackle. 5'9", 162-pound sophomore. So, yeah, big play for him. So on fourth down. Trojans look like they're going for it, are they? Moral Forsyth doesn't have everybody back. And just Kern does punt it. Oh, gets an Auburn Trojan bounce. So a good punt right down to the 20-yard line. So that that's a good a good punt there. Talk about the a change of field. Man, and that Auburn student section is absolutely loving that. A little bit of a momentum swing they're hoping for. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching Seth Q Friday Night Rivals on CW23. We'll be back in just a minute.
Welcome back to SFQ Friday Night Rivals. Paul Wappel, AJ Gersh, and Dante Furco, our sideline reporter, and the entire SFQ Friday Night Rivals team. Week two, the high school football season. We've got a good one here. 54 seconds left in the first quarter. Moroa Forsyth, top ranked team this week in Class 2A, leads Auburn 6 to nothing. And it's been all about special teams for Auburn so far. Two blocks from the same player, Grant Dobson finding a way on a punt and then later on an extra point and the defense has been playing fairly solid as well they just weren't able to stop Moreau Forsyth on that last drive now they've pinned them deep in their own side of the field let's see what they have panned for this one on first down from the 20 Maurer quickly throws complete gain of about five on the play reception that time made by Zane Giles that's exactly what they want to do there is get Giles in that one-on-one. -on -one. He made the move, but he couldn't make a cut towards the sideline. Two more guys follow. Second and five. Look at this. Andre Harden. Boy, he's got some speed and can move, and he's got the first down. That's a branch professional agriculture first down for Moroa Forsyth. I mean, you get this guy in the open field, and it is <laughs> unbelievable how quickly he can find those yards. Just take a look at this. What a hole on the right side. Nice little spin move. Brought down after 15. On first down from the 35. Maurer to Harden. It worked once. Why not do it again, right? And gets about eight yards. Almost nine on the play. Just barrels his way up the middle. The Moroa Forsyth offensive line doing a wonderful job. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, Paul. That's right. And the first quarter comes to an end. And we'll take a look at the first quarter scoring summary brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's six to nothing, as you can see. More on four sides over Auburn Trojan. We've got a good one. And we'll take a break. You're watching Seth Q, Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us. Welcome back to SFQ Friday Night Rivals. We're in Auburn, presented by News Channel 20. We are in Auburn, ready to start the second quarter. Moreau Forsyth, second and three from their own 30-yard line. Maurer to throw, complete. 
Sawyer Smith right there. He's all over Braxton Mitchell. Sawyer Smith, the senior, with a big play there. Absolutely. Merle Forsythe going away from the run game now. Back to Caden Maurer. And Sawyer Smith, he's a difference maker on both sides of the field as well. He's just read that one like a book. And now it's third and long. Third and seven. Maurer hands off. And it works. Andre Harden. See where they mark it. They're going to give they give him the first down. To Brant Professional Agriculture first down for Mora Forsythe. Ball at the 45-yard line. And with that run, Andre Harden already over 100 yards on the ground tonight. Those are Madden numbers, Paul. <laughs> Maurer on the keeper gets to midfield. So he gets five. It'll be second and five for Mora Forsythe. Absolutely gorgeous night for high school football. The Moroa Forsyth Trojans back to the line pretty quickly. Maurer looks to throw. No, he's going to keep it. Nope, throws. Complete to Mitchell. Out of bounds at the Auburn 47-yard line. Flag on the play. Let's see what that's all about, AJ. Yeah, if we take a look here. As Mitchell was rolling out, it looked as if a Moroa Forsyth Offensive lineman just completely wrapped up a Trojan and brought him down. And there's the call holding against Moore Forsyth. That will drive a head coach crazy. <laughs> Especially after a great sequence like we just saw out of their backfield. Speaking of Moore Forsyth, Coach Josh Josephs, in 24 seasons at Moore, he has won 212 games. He is a good coach fantastic coach who's had a fantastic last couple of seasons as well he was undefeated in the regular season last year and they lost to Tri-Valley in the state semis they have high hopes to say the least this year with Caden Maurer and uh, Andre Harden senior season second and 15 Maurer hands off to Harden left side look at him go he gets the first down just he gets the first down off of defenders on that one he's off to a Big night. That's a first down, a Brant Professional Agriculture first down for the visiting Trojans. He's been utilizing that spin move all night, and it doesn't seem like Auburn has an answer for it at the moment. Moroa Forsyth now from the 45 of Auburn on first down. Maurer, delayed handoff. Oh, jeez, they've just got tons of weapons. Still on his feet and a first down. Another first down to Brant Professional Agriculture. First down, Jalen Kashir. Little change of pace there for Moreau Foresight. Give Harden a moment to breathe, but man, Jalen Kashir just lowering his helmet and bringing an entire swarm of Auburn defenders down with him. Ball on the 32 now. Maurer. Oh, hands off again to Kassir. Ball is loose. Moreau Forsyth says they have it. Let's see. It's a late fumble. Let's see. That was Caden Venrick who came through unblocked. And it's still Moreau Forsyth ball there. That was tackle Joey Barrow in there as well. So second down and 13 now for the visiting team. And boy, is Moreau Forsythe lucky that they were able to recover that one. Maurer back to throw. Dumps it. Caught. Harden. Still going. He can do it all, can't he? The yards after being touched for the first time is really what has set him apart tonight. He can run. He can catch. And once he has the ball in his hands, he's looking at the end zone, Paul. So third and five, they're going to call it for Maurer. Harden, left side. Some hard yards there. Let's Stop see short, if they I believe. give it to him. I think he's short, too. Moral Forsyth undoubtedly would go for it on fourth and short. We talked about their impressive kicker, but 
You've only got a yard, maybe two here to go. You're going to go for it. Mauer from the gun. High snap. Hands off. Oh, and the Auburn Trojans defense, they are fired up. They were all over that one. Just so, making plays, Paul. How about that? That's a huge stop for the home team. And it was the same guy who got in the last time. Caden Venrick just absolutely unblocked. Tripped up. And Auburn, that gets the crowd alive here. First and 10 from their own 25. Talon Kern and Auburn. Only down 6 nothing. Kern quickly to throw. Ball is tipped. Almost intercepted. Ty Law. Check that. Ryan Shepard almost had the pick there. You could tell that he wasn't expecting that ball to be thrown right to his hands, Paul. So that'll bring up second and ten for the home team. Got away with one there. Kern dumps it. Smith cuts back, makes a good move. Still on his feet. And push back. He went a he went over a lot of real estate there, didn't get too much positive yardage at the end of the day there. But. So that's going to bring up third and nine for Auburn. What will they come up with here on third down? I have a feeling they're going for the sidelines here. So 738 left in the second quarter. I think Auburn's going to take a time out there. Yeah, they weren't sure what they wanted to do, and play clock was running down. So Auburn takes its first time out. We'll take a time out as well. You're watching Seth Q Friday Night Rivals on CW23. We'll be back with more from Auburn in just a minute. Welcome back to Seth Q, Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. I'm Paul Wapple, A.J. Gersh, Dante Furco. We've got a good one here in Auburn. The Auburn Trojans trailing Merle Forsyth 6 to nothing. 7.27 left in the second quarter, and a great shot there of the evening sky. Just an absolutely spectacular night. Beautiful first night of September tonight, Paul. It's been all about the Auburn defense, able to make plays at the right time. Let's see if they can convert with some points here. Third and 10, Kern scrambling, throws it high left and out of bounds. Probably a good move there so it doesn't get picked off. Fourth down and 10 and a punting situation for Auburn. So Kern didn't have anybody to throw to under heavy pressure there and decided to get rid of it through it where nobody could get it. Yeah, that was a smart play by Kern. He knew that he had no options. Kind of used the referee as a pick of sorts and <laughs> tossed it out of bounds. So Kern looks like he will punt for Auburn. Still a 6-0 game. See, that was a good punt, but they're going to do it again. I wonder if there was a delay game penalty. Or I heard a whistle. It's my kid. Call timeout. Let's see. It is delay game. So to be push Auburn back five yards, and they'll 
do the punt again. We're going to have to watch out for Caden Maurer now standing at the 50-yard line. And once you get him the ball with some room, they're going to have some good field position to start off. Moreau Forsythe clearly wasn't expecting to just be leading by six this deep into the second quarter. So they're going to want to put up some points. High snap. Kern did a good job to bring it down. Not a very long punt. Gets a good bounce. Maurer lets it go. But look. Moroa Forsyth will have the ball at the 45-yard line. Earlier this week, A.J. Gersh. Hang on. We've got a flag. And then we'll do something else. The Auburn crowd is cheering. Let's see what... Legal block in the back. And that's another big break for Auburn. It is. The Lincoln Land Educator of the Game. We're going to take a look at that now. A.J. Gersh caught up with the Educator of the Game earlier this week. Here with Mackenzie Bryant from LLCC Recruitment Specialist. Mm -hmm. We so appreciate you being with us here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. And uh, we want to talk about LLCC, a lot of exciting things, the school getting back mm -hmm. in the swing of things. How has the first couple weeks been? Oh, it's going great. We're already in our second week of classes, um, and it's been wonderful seeing the Auburn students and other high school graduates that I've worked with now on campus, enjoying all the activities we have going on to welcome them. So as a recruitment specialist, how do you help Auburn students, students really high, in high school all across central Illinois, learn more about LLCC? Yeah, so I go out into the high schools, Auburn, other schools in the district, about once a month throughout the year, um, and just talk with them about Lincoln Land. So whenever I'm at your school, come see me. We'll talk about Lincoln Land and everything that we have to offer. And I know before we went on camera here, you were talking about how busy you guys are. You guys mm -hmm. have any events coming up that students might be interested in? Yes, we have our big open house coming on October 9th. It's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that is when high schools are out for Indigenous Peoples Day. So you can come to campus, learn more about our programs, get tours, and we're even going to have a DJ and cookout too. So not just learning, but fun too, of course. So you can um, learn more by visiting our website. Awesome. Well, that should be a lot of fun. Mackenzie, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. All right. So a 45-yard touchdown there. That was the Abraham Lincoln Keppel Airport touchdown. Maurer to Mitch Williams, 45 yards. You're going to see it here in a second. Mitch Williams just found a couple of legs, uh, of, of strides past the DB, and Maurer found him in stride. What a touchdown. But the big news here on that is what happened afterwards. For the third time tonight, Paul, Grant Dobson getting in and breaking things up. Point after attempt, block two tonight. Two point after attempt attempts blocked. Incredible. Moroa Forsyth leading 12 to nothing. Auburn certainly hanging tough. Uh, good play there. Just a, a good pass by Maurer. Dumped it right into Williams' hands and into the end zone for the Abraham Lincoln Keppel Airport touchdown. So, second one of the night for Moroa Forsyth with seven minutes left. You get a good look at some of the crowd. Tonight, a big crowd, both sides here tonight in Auburn. Sangamo Conference. Senior night for the Trojans here at Auburn. Early in the season. And Luther will kick off. And that kickoff brought to you by Bridge Care Suites. Fielded at about the seven yard line. Looking for some room, hit hard at the 22-yard line. Returned by Carter Hunley, the junior. He was hit hard on the tackle. And Auburn, sooner or later here, has to put a drive together. Here's Carter Hunley. After a real nice kick there from Noah Luther, bringing it, but wow. What a tackle there by Canton Wilson. So first, <clears throat> excuse me, first and 10 from the 23-yard line. And Auburn only has two first downs so far through this game. They got to put together a drive here and score some points. Absolutely. Kern throws right, complete. Got some room and picks up about seven, maybe eight yards on the play. Good catch there by number 84, Braden Boylan. Boylan's gotten into the mix 
a lot tonight so far. We're going to find some consistency here on offense for Talon Kern. I would suggest maybe calling his number a couple more times. Second down and four for Auburn. Keeps it himself, Kern does. Hit hard. Not much there, if anything. It's going to bring up third down, and we'll call it four for Auburn. Like you said, the Auburn Trojans have to get something going on offense at some point, and if they can get a little drive going, see what they can do inside of six minutes here in the second quarter. They've had a heck of a game defensively so far, only letting up a couple of really long stretch plays. But when they're in the trenches, they've got the job done. Can the offense, though? High snap, Kern brings it down. Hand off. Did he get the first down or not? A good run there, but hit hard at the end of that by a couple of Merle Forsyth. Trojans, officials time out. And I think they're going to measure this one. This defensive line has been so tough tonight. Led by Andy Munjoy there, number 69 at nose tackle. He also plays center as well for Moreau Forsyth. This team is so tough in the trenches on both sides of the ball. And they're really not allowing Auburn to develop a running game whatsoever. Let's see what the sticks say here. Great camera work by our Suffolk Key Friendly Rams crew. Look at that. To be short. short inches. So what do you do here? You're Auburn. It's a tough call. I think you've got to go for it. Establish the fact that you need to score points before the end of the first half. We'll see what Coach Gardner does, though. I think you got to go for it, too. Especially against such a formidable foe as Moreau of Forsyth. You see the uh, palpable tension from the Auburn sideline. Looks like they're huddling up. And Kern comes, goes under center for this one. They are all bunched in. Look, <laughs> I think the Auburn Trojans trying to draw them all far side off. Kern goes forward. Ooh, it's I don't be a know. Close one. I'm not sure that he got it. Doesn't look like it. Moreau Forsyth is celebrating as if they did. Official timeout. They're going to spot it again. Let's bring the chains back out. Why don't okay. we? And I'm sure you're going to see some more great cam work by the men and women who do a great job here in the truck outside running the cameras. Here's the replay. Oh. He was bottled up as soon as he got that snap in his hands. Let's see what we got here. Oh, he. Oh, oh. is he pull out the oh. index card? Oh. Wow! You hear that reaction in the press box there at Auburn? My goodness! He got dead by a hair. Oh my! That's that's a brand professional agriculture first down, and you won't see a closer first down measurement than that. Wow! Absolutely Auburn not. gets the first down. It's an electric vibe here tonight from the Auburn side of the sidelines. The seniors love it. The fans love it. Auburn finally has some forward momentum. See if they can keep it. First and ten now. Kern has time. Goes it pretty high. Batted away. Almost picked off by Ty Law, the senior. I uh, checked that. Ryan Shepard. He's made a couple of great plays. And he's going to be a great player for Moreau Forsyth. Just a sophomore. Already two pass defended. And he's gotten in on a couple of plays to the Sawyer Smith as well. He's been locking him up so far here tonight. So it'll be second and 10 for Auburn. They need to get their offense going here. High snap, ball is loose. And, oh, I thought, I thought that Venrick stepped, had it recovered to see if he, he, he did. Wow. Up row Forsyth had that for a second. Just caught a flyer, Hundley back on it. Let's see if he was able to recover the ball cleanly. Not at first. I, it was loose and he got, oh, <laughs> wow. He said, oh, nope. 
Still Auburn ball. That's what matters if you're the Auburn Trojans. 418 left in the second. Third and 38. Auburn has a way to go here. There's a completion. Leonardo and ball is loose. And Forsyth comes up with the ball. Player down for Mora Forsyth. Let's watch the replay. Current through it. And he. It was a completion. He was dragging him down. Like Leonardo. That's Caden Maurer who got in there and punched that ball out. Let's go down to Dante Furco with the CASCOM sideline report. CASCOM keeping you connected. Thank you, Paul. AJ, I just heard you mention Caden Maurer. That's exactly who I wanted to talk about in this right here. You may wonder, why is Caden Maurer wearing 22? I wondered the same thing myself. He's a dual threat player. He's out there at safety, punt returner, quarterback, but why 22? I asked him that, and he told me he wears 10 for every other sport he plays, but a quarterback position, you don't usually see 22 worn, and in some leagues in like college football and the NFL, you wouldn't be allowed to wear that number. But he said early on in his football career at Moreau of Forsyth, a coach came to him, saw the talent in Maurer, and wanted him to follow a historical path at Moroa Foresight. That number 22 number has been passed on from talented player to talented player, and Moroa Foresight has an all-time great in Caden Mauer. So for him to pass on that tradition, he talked about it, raved about it, and well, is excited to see who wears 22 next. But if you were wondering why the quarterback's wearing 22, that's exactly why. I'm sending it back up to you, Paul. All right, Dante, good insight. Thank you very much for that. Got an injured player down. He is off the field now, and that's good news. He's okay. Yeah. K Niner walked off on his own strength. He was down for a moment after that big play. It was, in fact, a turnover. Caden Maurer forcing the fumble. Now he's out at quarterback, and he's looking for six. From the 10, Maurer to Harden. Look at him go right into the end zone. Touchdown, Roy Forsyth. And that's the Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown as Harden just barrels through from 10 yards. It's 18 to nothing, Moroa Forsyth. And that was great blocking from the offensive line. You see Harden, just a great little pole block there from 84 coming over and making the play. That's Grant Smith. You got to love it if you're Moroa Forsyth. Just an easy walk in touchdown for Harden for his second of the night. Now let's see if Moroa Forsyth goes for the extra point. Or they go for two here. I think they might. Go for two. No, they're gonna. Yep, they're gonna go for two. After the two, Mauer blocks. Mauer in trouble. Gets. How did he throw that complete? The conversion is good, and the big catch there. Wow. Grant Smith. Number he had that great block, the play before, and catches the two-point conversion next. So. Makes it 20 to nothing. Moroa Forsyth will take a break. Back with more from Auburn in just a minute. Welcome back to SefQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Moroa Forsyth, the top-ranked team in Class 2A this week, leads Auburn here in Auburn, 20 to nothing, after the touchdown run by Andre Harden. Yeah, two touchdowns the first game, two touchdowns already so far, and Grant Smith 
making a couple of big plays at the end of that drive. He was a favorite target of Caden Maurer in their first game of the season, a big win against Pleasant Plains. He caught a touchdown. He had 80-plus yards receiving, so developing into one of Maurer's go-to guys in this young season so far, Paul. And Noah Luther with the Bridge Care Suites kickoff. Gets it to about the 10. Still on his feet. Brought up short of the 25-yard line, about the 24-yard line. A return that time by Noah Hundley. So let's see if Auburn can come up with something on offense, give them some confidence, some points. That's what they need to get back in this one. They had the formula going there at the beginning of the drive and then just an unfortunate two plays in a row. They had that uh, pass that was broken up and a uh, uh, fumble caused by Maurer. But Kern across the middle, complete, hit hard, but he hangs on to, gets the first down. Does Auburn, Steven Emerson. And that's, and that's exactly. a brand professional agriculture first down. That's exactly what the Trojans need here on offense. Just a little bit of a spark. They got to play a little bit fast here as this second quarter winding down. They want to put some points on the board, Paul. High snap, Kern gets it, throws, complete. Left side, still on his feet. Nice gain there to the 45-yard line. Calling on Emerson again. So second down and five after the reception from Emerson. Kern picked off. Look out. Look out. He's going to go. Nobody's going to get him. Touchdown. And Abraham Lincoln, Kepler for touchdown. Ryan Shepard for more Forsyth. Wow. He has 43 been yards all over the Auburn Trojans wide receivers tonight. Two passes defended. This one, he just jumps the foresight there from Shepard, gets in front of Steven Emerson, takes this one to the house. He's had the foresight that has really set him apart. The young sophomore from Royal Foresight making a name for himself on live television tonight, Paul. Tough turnover there for Auburn. Now Royal Foresight will try to add to their 26 point lead. He was just an easy sprint to the end zone after that one. Right into, right into his hands. And the Trojans of our, uh, check that of Maroa Forsyth will go for two once again after the interception return for the touchdown. Whistle. So Maroa Forsyth starting to turn things on now. Two fifty seven to go here in the second quarter. More Forsyth is ready. Mauer goes at a corner to the end zone wide open and it is caught. So the two point conversion is good. Reception by Mitch Williams, 28 to nothing, Moreau Forsyth. And right now, we're going to check out the SEFQ Smile Cam. Look at that. A lot of smiles out tonight, and why not? Playing football. Week, week two of the high school football season. It's a lot cooler temperature, a lot less humidity, and look at that. People are clapping. They're happy. They're enjoying the action. A lot of time left in this one. Still not at halftime. The SEFQ Smile Cam. Yeah, Lots score, of smiles. Score not really having a uh, hindrance on the fun being had here in the stands. Jamming out. Gotta love high school football. Nothing like it. The great tradition of fall in central Illinois. Except you smile, Ken. You know, one of the things coach, the coaches talked about earlier this week, more foresight last week, AJ, with the weather, the heat, the humidity, and all kinds of other things, lightning last week. Moreau Forsyth started their game at about 10.25 p.m. So that was, that was a late night, an early morning. 
So I think they went from Friday Night Lights to what Saturday Sunrise football. How's that? Something like that. <laughs> there we go. That's more my think kind of something. Of vibe, yeah, Paul. Right. You're the early bird. Sunrise. <laughs> what are you on? Five to seven, right? Five, five, to, five seven to seven on uh, News Channel Kill? Twenty. That's right. Seven to eight on Fox Illinois. There you love it go. to have you tune in. We'll be talking football <laughs> all fall long. You already know. That's right. So the Moa Forsyth Trojans leading comfortably 28 to nothing will kick off again. And that is a Bridge Care Suites kickoff. Another good one. Fielded cleanly at the 10. Got some room. Out to about the 31 yard line for the Auburn Trojans that time. Hunley able to put together a few good returns here. He's been a little bit of a difference maker for Auburn so far. I wonder if they will give it to him here on the offensive side of the ball as well. He's still out on the field at tailback. You got to think that Auburn's offense is shaking up a little bit. They need some, some confidence, need something here going into halftime. Be great if they could get, a, get on the board. Let's see what they come up with. Kern hands off to Hunley. Got some room on the outside. Gets about six on the play. He's been the spark plug for the Auburn Trojans so far. Vern not able to find some receivers. They've been locked up. Ryan Shepard playing great in defensive back territory. And Hunley, if he's on the outside, it's tough to stop him. Haven't seen much from Clayton DiNardo tonight. Haven't, haven't gotten him the ball very much. Been tough to find him open tonight. High snap. Kern pulls it down. Hunley gets it. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Lost on the play. Ends up at the 35, and Hunley is shaken up, it looks like, a little bit. He's down on the ground. The high snap, and Hunley lucky to get it hit hard by a couple of Moral Forsyth Trojans. So they'll take a look at Hunley, see how he's doing. Yeah, down on the field is Hunley. It was a good read by Charlie Gentle there, number 36 by Moreau Foresight. Never want to see a guy down in the field. Uh, we're going to wait a little bit to see what's going on out here in Auburn. Looked like when they dragged him down, maybe a little bit of a whiplash in that tackle. A lot of, lot of tradition here in Auburn. I was telling you, AJ, and Hunley is back on his feet. Great to see. A lot of tradition here in Auburn. Dave Bates, legendary coach, coached until three years ago. In 2015, the uh, Auburn Trojans made it to the state championship game, finished second in the state, incredible season. They entered that postseason, I think it was six, six and three record, and just turned it on at the right time and went to the state championship game. A lot of tradition here in Auburn. We talked about the Donardo connection, uh, Clayton Donardo's dad, Zach is a volunteer coach here. And it's good to see Hunley back on his feet, talking to the medical staff there, getting some hydration. Uh, he looks in good shape here. But yes, Auburn, long-standing tradition here with Friday Night Rivals as well. And Coach Bates' son, of course, is on the staff. Michael Bates, and also played here at Auburn. So... A lot of family, a lot of connections here in Auburn. And, yeah, we did the first Friday Night Rivals game here, 2015. So 2.12 to go. Second quarter here. 28 to nothing. If you just tuned in. Moral Forsyth showing why they are the top-ranked team in the state. They are loaded on offense, defense, and special teams with a top-notch kicker who can kick a field goal from about 40 yards. So back to action here, third and seven now for Talon Kern. Back to throw. Steps up, look out. Ball is loose. Auburn, I think Auburn got it back. Boy, more foresight was right there. Once well, again, it's going to make it fourth in a, in a mile or two. Yeah, take a look at that. Charlie Gento once again just finding the gap, disrupting, getting to the quarterback, forcing him to scramble outside, and then coming in to clean up the play, forcing the fumble as Christian Morgan 
just an absolute wrap up there and uh, it's struggle here for the Auburn Trojans as Morella is really showing just how dominant they are. So we've got a timeout. Fourth and 25 for Auburn when we after this timeout with 201 in the second quarter. We'll get you some scores from across the area. You see a great shot of the sky and the crowd here in Auburn. They love their high school football. They love their sports, athletics here. Great, great community. Great field, great facility. And senior night, as we talked about, for Auburn. They want to let you know that Friday Night Rivals is available streaming live on NewsChannel20.com and on News Channel 20's Facebook page. You can also find a link to complete game videos from this season on newschannel 20 Dot com. Got to check it out. Got to get that streaming in. People tuning in from all around the country tonight. But especially here in central Illinois, nobody's wanting to miss this game. Fourth and 25. Kern. Pretty good punt. Out of bounds. So with 154, let's see what Moro Forsyth, how they play it. Here they've got excellent field position ball on their own 45-yard line. Royal well, Forsyth likely to try to score some points here before the end of the first half and really make this a tall task for Auburn to come back here. As there's a couple of friendly faces we are so <laughs> grateful for each and every week. Sefki Friday Night Rivals production truck. We've got a great crew. The men and women do a great job. Thank you for what you do. On first down from the 45, Maurer scrambles, steps up, brought down. Hard to contain him, but Auburn was able to on that play. And even on a sack, it looks like Caden Maurer is the most <laughs> elusive player on the field. Joey Barrow getting in there, finally bringing him down after one, two, three, four moves to evade the defender. Throws it complete, left side. Mitch Williams still on his feet. First down, Brant Professional Agriculture first down. 120 to go in the first half. And the Trojans of Moreau Forsyth want to move quickly to the line. He catches the Auburn off guard. Maurer back to throw again. He's looking right side, got it up in the air. Complete, still on his feet. He's going to make the no. Stopped at the two yard line. Wow, what a catch by Zane Giles. And <laughs> Auburn did everything they could. Clayton DiNardo with a touchdown saving tackle there. Unbelievable. You see Zane Giles just drag DiNardo. DiNardo full body weights on Clayton Giles and uh, got just two yards away. First and now. goal from the three, Harden. Andre Harden trying to get in. No, he has stopped. So it'll be second and goal. 57 seconds left in the second quarter. Here's the replay. Look at Harden. Thought he was going to get in there, but boy, good stop there by Auburn. Took three, four, five defenders to bring him down. The sheer strength of some of these Moreau Forsyth Trojans is just astounding. Really shows you how talented they are in all facets of the game. You know, we've talked about it. I said, uh, you know, Moroa Forsyth has 19 of 22 starters back. That's an incredible number. We were talking about Sacred Art Griffin a little bit in the preview show tonight, and uh, they lost last week. They've only had a, got a couple of starters back from the state championship squad from a year ago. They have a new coach, and some people may be thinking of pushing the panic button. I don't think there's any need to after one game, and we'll see how they do tonight. Yeah, especially uh, the Cyclones. Considering they were a 7A uh, matchup, last week against normal community that's a tough opponent to start off your season now back in the central state eight taking on normal U. we're going to see what they're really made of at shg here this week i have a much better idea i think after tonight i agree now tonight at 10 15 on abc join us at the news channel 20 sports desk to get all of your local high school football highlights with the friday night rivals recap that's on news channel 20 with dante furco and brielle berry
Mitch Williams had another big catch on this drive here, Paul. He had that big streaking touchdown a couple of drives ago. Former O Forsyth. He's now over 100 yards with that touchdown uh, and, and big first down on this drive. He's having a heck of a game. Caden Mowers only missed two passes so far tonight. Second and goal from the one, and look at that. Barrels his way into the end zone, and that's a Abraham Lincoln Kepler for touchdown for Maroor Forsyth, but there is a flag on the play. And Auburn defenders looks to are pointing be against Maroor Forsyth, it looks like. Let's see. Maybe it's a hold. Somebody may have jumped. Oh, we'll wait for the call. Auburn obviously would love a penalty on Maroor Forsyth. 28 nothing they or 34 nothing they trail. So there you heard that uh, unsportsmanlike conduct against more foresight. The touchdown counts. It is good. It's an Abraham Lincoln Kepler Airport touchdown. So it does make it 34 to nothing. More foresight here. And let's see. They this time they will attempt the extra point. Noah Luther, Maurer the hold. Noah Luther to attempt the extra point here is 53 seconds left in the second quarter. Good snap and a good kick right through the uprights, and it is 35 to nothing. Moral Forsyth leads the Auburn Trojans here in Auburn. He saw Grant Thompson work his way through the middle of the line there. He was the man to look out for. He's had two PAT blocks so far tonight. He blocked a punt as well. He nearly blocked this one. It was uh, very close there as Noah Luther has been. Looking over his shoulder all night long for Moreau Forsyth. He is certainly a good one. We talked about that. Uh, Luther is. But. Hit a big field goal in our Friday Night Rivals game of the week last year against Williamsville. He did, and that was uh, one of the best games we've done on Friday Night Rivals. Certainly last year went down to the last play of the game. Moreau Forsyth edging Williamsville at Williamsville. What a great rivalry, those two schools. Oh, fantastic. Both making it deep runs into the playoffs last year both have high expectations once again this season and Moreau Forsyth really showing their colors here tonight 35 nothing not even half time every single facet of this team is clicking so far Auburn really feeling it here early and with 53 seconds left so the more foresight on sports like conduct penalty pushes the kick for Noah Luther back to the 25 yard line. So Auburn obviously hoping to get some good field position here. Maybe they can get on the board before before halftime hits. And we're ready and this is another Bridge Care Suites kickoff. It's a high kick. Dropped at the 30. Loose ball. I think Maroa Foresight, they got it. Yeah. Oh, not what you wanted if you're Auburn. Oh, my goodness. 47 seconds. Now you really got to hold them on the board. Hard to catch on the run. The kick had some zip on it. Noah Hundley just couldn't quite hang on to it. So here comes Maroa Foresight with... Excellent field position. 51 seconds left in the second quarter. Get the ball at the 26 yard line. 51 seconds is a lot of time, Paul, once you're at the 25 yard line. And Hundley just kind of misjudged that one running up on it a little quick. Here's Caden Moore. Mauer starting to uh, look towards the end zone once again. Mauer dumps it out of bounds, stops the clock. 45 seconds, makes it second and 10. Mauer is. A great athlete. He is a great player. He is smart and wise to throw that out of bounds. Second and ten for the 26. I'll be curious to see here if they can't. This Moral Forsyth can't get in the end zone if we get to see Noah Luther attempt a field goal. We'll 
to wait and see. Second and ten. Maurer throws it quickly, complete to Mitchell. Still on his feet, cuts back left. Might make it in the end He does. 26-yard touchdown. And that's an Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown for Maura Forsyth. And just like that, it is 41 to nothing. And what a play extra here. point from Braxton Mitchell, just wiggling his way through the defense. A couple of great blocks downfield, opening up the seam on the left side, just to walk into the end zone. Maroa Forsyth absolutely dominating in the first half here tonight. And Noah Luther will try to make it 42 to nothing. Maurer to hold. And Maroa Forsyth just putting up some incredible numbers here in the first half. Extra point, plenty of leg, and it is good. So it is 42 to nothing. Maroa Forsyth leads the home team, Auburn, here on week two. Caden Maurer putting together an incredible half. He is just shy of 200 yards passing so far, only three incompletions, two touchdowns already. Man, he's, what a special athlete. He, no doubt about it. We talked about it in the previous show, talked about it earlier this week, and the coach said he's going to go down as one of the best, obviously, players in Mara Forsyth history and four-year starter. Just unbelievable. He is a talent. And we've said that for four years, and he deserves all the accolades he gets. Coach said, quote, one of the best competitors that I've had the privilege to coach. You know, a three-sport athlete gives it his all. He's just different, dude. That is a quote from Coach <laughs> Justice. He's just different. And, yeah, he said, if not the best pound-for-pound -pound player, probably the best player we've ever had at Moroa Forsyth. You've <laughs> seen it all tonight. 5'7", 143, my goodness. It's just incredible. Van Rick and Hunley back to receive the kick. 34 seconds. It's taken a long time to play the last few minutes of the second quarter. We've had a lot of action, so. And Luther with another Bridge Care Suite kickoff. A lot of leg on that one. Fielded by Hunley at the 10. Cuts back 20. Close to the 25-yard line. And with 29 seconds left, let's see if Auburn takes the knee or they try to go to the air and catch more of Forsyth maybe off guard or something. Maybe come up with a trick play here. See how they play it with trailing 42 to nothing. Things have really taken a tough turn here, obviously, for Auburn. Just in the, the last quarter. two minutes here, Paul, Moreau Forsyth putting up several touchdowns. They've scored thrice in just the last couple of minutes here. That's, of course, why this end of the yeah, half is taking so long. Looks and like getting nothing, up. nothing going right for Auburn. I think we got a block in the back. Mm. Penalty on the kick, I believe. First and 10 from the 14. Kern keeps it on the ground, hands off. Auburn plays it safe. And Caden Venrick with the carry. The junior running back. So 15 seconds. See if the Auburn Trojans let this one run down. It looks like the that's what they're going to do. I think do. that's what it, they will do indeed. And we will catch up with the one of the coaches here. Halftime. So we're at halftime. Moroa Forsyth with an impressive first half. 42 to nothing. There is the Academy Sports Outdoors scoring summary. Moroa Forsyth leading 42 to nothing. Thanks to Academy Sports Outdoors for sponsoring the scoring summary this season as we are at halftime. Uh, quick first quarter, second quarter a little long. A lot of points for one team here and for some people that's a whole game. For some team that's a whole whole game, AJ, but wow. Certainly. It, it was a good start for the Auburn Trojans. 
they got out quickly, especially on the special teams. They had a couple of blocked kicks, a blocked punt. They were playing great defense to start this game, only holding Moreau of Forsythe to a touchdown without the extra point. And, uh, and then they just, everything came unhinged in the second. All right, let's go down to Dante. Dante? Thank you, guys. We're here with Moreau of Forsythe head coach, Josh Rosas. Coach, talk to me a little about what you saw from your guys in the first half. We have a 42-0 game at halftime. Uh, I thought we played about as bad as we can play in the first quarter and uh, fortunately probably played about as well as we can play in the second quarter. So that kind of turned it, got the momentum going, and uh, um, I think that kind of snowballed on them quickly. What's going to be your message to your guys if you had, as you head into the locker room right now? Well, keep our focus. Uh, going to get some new guys in, and uh, they're going to get their chance to play on Friday night uh, arrivals. And then finally, what did you see out of Caden uh, in this first half at the quarterback position? He's a special kid. I think the last touchdown ball he threw underhand, so uh, he's just different. Uh, a lot of people talk about Patrick Mahomes' arm angles. Our, our guys got them all, too. Awesome. We'll let you go in the locker room to see your team. That's jo Coach Josh Joseph sending it back up to you guys. Oh, oh man. Thank you. Dante, wow. The Fox Illinois Halftime Report is coming up next. Stay tuned. Halftime report on Friday Night Rivals. Paul Waffle, AJ Gersh, Dante Furco, our sideline reporter here tonight. Halftime at Auburn. And earlier today, SEFQ presented Auburn High School with a $500 donation to say thank you for hosting tonight's Friday Night Rivals matchup. SEFQ will make a $500 donation to each Friday Night Rivals host school throughout the season for use for their general fund. SEFQ is proud to support our communities, our schools, and our students with Friday Night Rivals. And we'll take a break. Back with more on the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us.
halftime report on Friday Night Rivals halftime at Auburn. And I want to let you know that throughout this Friday Night Rivals season, Route 66 Solar will recognize an exceptional senior student athlete from each participating school with a plaque presentation prior to each game. This week's Route 66 Scholar Athletes, or Solar Scholar Athletes are from Auburn, Brody Lynn. Brody excels in football, wrestling, and track. He's a top 10 student in his class, taking honors classes and scoring the top 10% on the SAT. He's active in the business and Spanish clubs. Brody volunteers at the Auburn Food Bank, helps at the Eastland Retirement Community, and participated in the Auburn Square Beautification Project. And from Maroa Forsyth, Charlie Dentiel. Charlie ranks first in a class of 85, excelling in academics and participating in the National Honor Society and all state academic teams. He's a multi sport athlete, captaining the football team, excelling in pole vaulting, and participating in tennis and bass fishing. Charlie contributes to events like homecoming and Christmas toy drives, coaching youth football, and his involvement in fellowship of Christian athletes and FFA events. These students are also eligible to win a $5,000 scholarship to be presented at the end of the season courtesy of Route 66 Solar. Route 66 Solar is proud to support and encourage exceptional student athletes across central Illinois. Congratulations to both of this week's Route 66 Solar Scholar athletes, Brody Lynn from Auburn and Charlie Gentile from Maroa Forsyth. And let's go down to Dante Furco on the sidelines. Dante? Thank you, guys. I'm joined alongside Auburn Superintendent Darren Root, as well as Moreau Foresight, District Athletic Director Phil Appleby. We're here for Friday Night Rivals game. Talk to me a little about what's it like to host a Friday Night Rivals game and see all these fans out here for a great night of football. Hey, there's nothing like Friday Night Football. We have a great set of fans here. The, the weather's beautiful, not like last weekend. And we're just happy to be here, and we're happy you're here with us. Awesome. And turning it over to you, I mean, you're not hosting right now. I know later in the season we'll have you guys hosting at Moreau Foresight. But what's it like for these guys, the students, to kind of see themselves on TV? Uh, well, our kids every year, uh, they love the Friday Night Rival game. They think it's just, it's a highlight for them. So anytime we get, we're fortunate enough to be on, um, our kids love it. Our, our community loves it. You know, we're getting texts, hey, we saw this, saw that on TV. So they love it. Awesome. And then I know we talked before, some of the new renovations that's gone around, uh, around the school, talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, Moreau as well as Auburn, we have uh, what's called the countywide facility sales tax. It's something that went in three years ago. So we started to, to be able to invest in facilities, money only that can be spent on facilities. So we've done things like put in nice playgrounds, uh, parking lots, and uh, this year we've really focused on security. We've moved our offices to the front of the building. It's been a hot thing. We put key fobs in, and it's, it's a lot of neat things going on. You can see schools in the area really getting improvements. Awesome. Kind of the same question to you. What have you, what has gone on around the Murrow Foresight District in terms of new renovations and uh, maybe things to look forward to? Yeah. Uh, over the past couple of years, we built, uh, we just moved into our brand new middle school in uh, February, uh, brand new 500 seat auditorium. It's, we held our first musical there last uh, spring and it's unbelievable. It's like walking in, I feel like I'm at Broadway. Kids love that. Um, and then we're doing a lot of the same things, a lot of the security that's Ladies been kind of a hot button topic, key fobs, um, just doing a lot of work there at the middle school and it's attached to the high school. We redid our turf this year. So um, a lot of good things happening at Moreau Forsyth and uh, we really thank our community for always being behind us. Awesome. Thank you to Darren Root and Phil Appleby for joining us here on the sideline for Friday Night Rivals, saying it up to AJ and Paul in the booth. All right. Thank you very much. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more on the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Paul Waffle, A.J. Gersh, Dante Furco in Auburn. And we're going to take a look at first half highlights. A.J., pretty much all Marois Forsyth. Andre Harden getting it done early. He had 100 yards in the first quarter and a half. He was so dominant in the first early stages of the game, but also, so was Grant Dusk. Yeah, incredibly blocked a couple kicks. There's a touchdown by Mitch Williams for Moral Forsyth. As the Trojans of Moral Forsyth really putting it on the Auburn Trojans tonight, just in all facets. Auburn held their own early, and then the floodgates opened. Here's Andre Harden again with his second touchdown of the night, but it's really been the Caden Maurer show. That sidearm throw, that's what Coach Joseph was saying, like Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, quite a compliment talking about that. Pretty incredible. And right now, we're going to take a look at some Friday Night Rivals and Thursday Night Lights. Great moments from across the country. Enjoy this. Oh, they're going to come out wide open. What, they come out with a trick Oh, that was a beautiful done. They got Ridge real sweet. And he's going to end up to the end. Let's it fly towards the end zone. Touchdown, mm -hmm. Matt Manning. Chunk. Block. Steps up. Now he's going to have a chance up the near side. Look at Joe Lock going across midfield inside the 40. Still on his feet. Makes a move in the 20. 10. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Now these next two drives are going to have to play up to the Oh, it's going to be intercepted after the deflection. And it's going to be a pick six. Cleveland had one last week. Rolls all the way left, back to the middle, caught! The snap, the hold, the kick, is good! Indy wins with a triple overtime comeback! The old Pelovin from Marion County, on to attempt the extra point, it's a fake! Warriors to the back side, they got it set up, he goes airborne! Wow, oh, pretty good stuff. Goodness. Great stuff from uh, Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals across the country. Acrobatic. Wow. All right, we'll take a break. Back with more on the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals from Auburn. Stay here. Welcome back to Seth Q Friday Night Rivals presented by News Channel 20. 
Paul Waffle, AJ Gersh, Dante Furco. Let's go down to Dante right now. Thank you, guys. I'm here with Auburn head coach Ryan Garner. Coach, talk to me about your team's performance in the first half. Got to be better. And also, what was your message to your guys in the locker room as you guys uh, were in there? It's about pride in the second half. We've got to be better. Thank you, Coach. That was at Auburn head coach Ryan Gardner sending it back up to you guys. All right. Thank you, Dante. Obviously, two different stories, two different coaches. Yeah. And Frustrating first half there for Coach Gardner. Absolutely. So we talked about it. We'll uh, let everybody know, remind them, the running clock here in the second half because of the score differential. So the score, or excuse me, the clock won't stop unless there's a timeout injury or a uh, score here in the second half since it's more than 35 point difference on the scoreboard so might be a uh, pretty quick second half and like coach Ryan Gardner said it's about pride make some positive steps and do what you can here make so you can head into game three on a more a little bit of a positive note, right? Exactly. Even, even though 42 to nothing at half, seemingly in, somewhat insurmountable deficit, especially with the running clock. Here in the second half, what they want to do is find some forward momentum, score a couple of touchdowns, move the ball, get some first downs. They're missing their left tackle tonight. Starter 52, Juan Garon. That's been a big time uh, impact there, their ability to keep their quarterback, Talon Kern, up from the ground he's been hit a lot tonight carter hunley has been swarmed from the backfield it's just been a tough first half for the auburn trojans but it really is testament to just how talented this morale foresight team is and you heard uh morale foresight head coach talking about well <laughs> a little bit talking about Pat, patrick mahomes comparison a little bit to uh caden maher with that one pass and who can argue with him on that okay. and he said uh you know of course he'll see some Different players come in the second half. And there's a Bridge Care kickoff. Bridge Care Sweets kickoff. Auburn with the return to about the 27 yard line. And the Auburn offense will come out and probably see a lot of different players on both sides of the, both from both teams tonight uh, here in the second half. Yeah, they're going to switch things up, run some new schemes, see what works, what doesn't, some new additions to the playbook. I know Auburn was excited to run a couple of different new plays here in the second half might be the time to bring them out see what works why not talent Kern the senior remains in a quarterback high snap hands off to Caden Venrick Venrick with some good offense there and if you got a first down I think that's the Did first enough big run that Auburn's been been able to break loose this evening and they're trying to establish a run game here Paul I spoke too soon. It'll be second and one for Auburn. Kern gives it again to Fenrick. Not nearly the success on that play as the previous one. That one just swallowed by Zach Scott there. And our scholar athlete of the game, Charlie Gentile. And we'll bring some scores along to you as we have them. And there were some pretty lopsided scores around Central Illinois tonight besides this one. A lot of blowouts here this yeah. week, Paul. Williamsville up 42 to nothing on Riverton. You have Athens up 40 to 14 over Pleasant Plains. Nice run here, though. Venrick down the sidelines. Yeah, definitely a good run there. And that is a brand professional agriculture first down. Gain of about 14, no more than that on the play there. And Running clock, like we said, second half. Auburn quickly to the line. That one might put uh, Coach Gardner in a little bit of a better mood as we run our way into the Auburn territory. We have a... I saw the official market. That's why I was wondering. He went out of bounds, and they moved it forward quite a bit. Could have been a classic case of the uh, Auburn guys. And, uh, let's get a couple more. <laughs> Why not? So first and ten from the 43. Venrick again. Mm, Stop there. Thrown for a loss. Right now we're going to send it down to Dante Furco for the second half. Brand Professor Agriculture Field Conditions. Dante. 
Thank you, thank you, guys. It's nice and cool down here. You are really feeling a, feel a little bit of a breeze. Not, the heat is not too high, so you can tell these guys are starting to get more relaxed. With the grass, we mentioned before the game, the, they have a high grass here. It is not a turf field, which is, I'm sure, helping these players stay cool and stay ready for the game. So as we head into the end of this game, we may see a little bit of a temperature dip from what I was told from Darren before the game. So something to keep an eye out on, but we have a, we have a long, long second half to go. So sending it back up to you guys up in the booth. All right. Thank you, Dante. Current pass to Donardo. Incomplete, could not connect. So our only fields, not turf, for our Friday Night Rivals games of the week this season, if not the only one. And next week, we were talking a little bit, we'll be uh, at Millican University, Central a and we'll play Decatur St. Teresa there. On St. Teresa Rivals. Right now, Paul, down 34-7 to to Altoff Catholic. And there's a long pass, and it's complete! Touchdown! 45 yards! Kern to Carter Hudley. That's a Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown. And the home team and their fans are fired up with 8.02 to go. Look at that. Aired it out, AJ. A little bit of a taste of the talent Kern that we saw last week against New Berlin. Not afraid to air it out deep. And you guessed it, he found his playmaker. Hundley's been making a difference all night long. He gets past number 25, Brady Larson. And just a perfect ball there from Kern. Maybe a little bit behind him, but didn't matter with the speed of Hundley on that one. And Hundley was going to try to get the two-point conversion, but uh, I think Auburn moved. So they'll be penalized. They'll have a longer way to go to get that two-point conversion as we said running clock in the second half but what a nice throw there nice nice play and that's exactly what coach Gardner was talking about when he said pride come out throw everything aside what happened in the first half doesn't matter let's just put some points on the board Kern goes to the air trying to get that two-point conversion can't do it out of bounds and 42 to 6. We'll take a break. You're watching Seth Pugh, Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Back with more from Auburn in just a minute. Welcome back to SEPQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. 42 to 6, Moreau Forsyth in control. The Auburn Trojans just got on the board. Look at that. What a great shot of the moon. Beautiful evening tonight. Ball. Stunning. Stunning. Almost as beautiful as a couple of nights ago. Was it last night or two nights ago? Two nights ago, I think, the moon. The super blue moon. Oh, that was awesome. Was that was last saw. night. Yes. Got to keep my day nights. straight. That was, look at, oh, what another great shot. Uh, Shout out to our incredible photographers, producers, production team, everyone working tonight for our Friday Night Rivals broadcast. Just an absolute class. And you know what? And thank you uh, to our director, Doug, because uh, some great drone footage so as well. So thank you for that. And you know what, AJ, we didn't do the game last week, but we had the preview show. We, we started the broadcast of the game, uh, didn't have a game. And uh, shout out because last week all the time and the sweat and the hours everybody put in, they all uh, the crew put in, men and women, to set things up and have it ready for the game. It just didn't happen because of the lightning. 
we talked about. So really, thanks for last week as well. Absolutely. It was just absolutely miserable last week in terms of the weather forecast. Several of those games, Moreau, like you said earlier in the night, didn't kick off until 1030 plus that Friday night. A couple of teams getting delayed until Saturday. We're here tonight. Couldn't be a more different story in terms of the weather. Hunter Piper with the Bridge Care Suites kickoff. At the 15. Got some speed. Better get him. Still on his feet. Out to midfield. How about that return there? Oh, Moreau Forsythe. That's Canton Wilson. What a nice oh, run back turn. Turn. The Brian Check Flag. That. Sorry about that. Brian Flag. Wow. Showed some good moves, a good speed there. Well, spin move there to get outside the numbers and streak down the sideline. Now look where Moreau Fort side signed that up. And let's see Midfield. who we have. We heard Coach Yost say some different players, and that is the case. Ryan Shepard in a quarterback. He's going to throw. He's going to make a completion to Mitch Williams. Left side. Pick up about seven on the play. So new quarterback, same result, a complete pass. I have a feeling for the next couple of years after Keaton Maurer is graduating that we might be hearing a lot of Ryan Shepard. He has a touchdown tonight, that pick six. A couple of passes defended at cornerback. He's a very special defensive player. We'll see what he has on the offensive side of the ball as well. Back throw, no, he hands off. Look at that. Now Jalen Kashir. Jalen Kashir, the senior, with a good run. You change the names, but still the same result. He just very positive. Dragged an Auburn defender about five yards. And that's a first down. It's a Brandt Professional Agriculture first down from Royal Forsyth from the 33. There's the handoff again to Kashir. Jalen Kashir going, still on his feet. Down to the 15-yard line. Oh my goodness, Jalen Kashir. We were talking a little bit earlier about how it's a change of pace between him and between the other back, of course, Andre Harden. But once Kashir lowers his shoulder, he's dangerous in Look the midfield. Out. Absolutely. Another Brandt professional agriculture first down. They go to the air. The Trojans who got a man in the end zone. Oh, just overthrew him a little bit. Intended receiver was number 20, Zane Giles. Shepard a little too much on that one, but had his man beat. You see the replay here. A little bit of a timing play. Just a little too much. Yeah, just trying to get his reps with the starters. Trying to find that timing between Giles. And now we're seeing Rain Shepard, Ryan Shepard step in. On second and ten. The Merle Forsyth Trojans keep it on the ground. And Wilson. Kenton Wilson with the carry. We'll get to some scores in a minute here. As we said running clock. 42 to 6 Merle Forsyth. Winding down here in the third quarter already. Third and five. Comes back this way, got some room, goes wide, and he's going to sneak in to the end zone. Yes, that's a catch. Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown. Said that a lot tonight. Touchdown by number two, Ryan Shepard. The sophomore gets into the act. Once again, Ryan Shepard, he doesn't like what he sees in the middle of the field, so he says, why not? Let's run further left than we had left towards the end zone in that direction. He stretches it out wide. He's just faster than everyone else on the outside there, Paul. Coach is hyped about that for Ryan Shepard, too. So Logan Klein will attempt the extra point. He is the other kicker on this team. Give him some experience to Logan Klein and kick is up, and it is good. So that makes it 40. All right, we'll take a break. 49 to 6. You're watching Seth Q Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Sep Q Friday Night Rivals presented by News Channel 20. 319 left in the third quarter. We've got a running clock here in Auburn. Auburn and Trojans trail Moroa Forsyth. 49 to 6 Sangamon Conference matchup. Both teams came into this game with their after winning their first game, their opener last week. Have a couple of scores. Yeah, a couple of scores from around the region. Muhammad Seymour, a low-scoring game against Highland. 7-0 in the third quarter. Shelbyville, 36-28. And there is a, another Bridge Care Suites kickoff. 15. Trying to find some room. Trying to get outside. Good return that time by Carter Hundley. What else do you have, AJ? Yeah, Shelbyville playing Eureka. They're winning 36-28. Uh, to 28. They're a ranked team, number 11 here uh, in Mount Zion. Taking on Triad in the third quarter as well. They're up by a couple of touchdowns, 29-14. to 14. Monticello winning big, 45-7 to 7 over uh, IBCHS. Got a lot of blowouts tonight. Pena and Carlinville is tight, though. 16 to 13 in the fourth quarter. We're gonna have to keep our eye on that one, Paul. All right First and ten Kern gets the high snap Got some running room there Gets about six on the carry On the play and want to thank Antonio's pizza for Providing the meal for the Friday Night Rivals crew tonight anything goes at Antonio's Great pizza. Thank you. I had some of that myself. Did you? Uh, I would yeah. say the yeah, anything goes <laughs> slogan is applicable yes. to uh, anything goes on my plate if it's from Antonio's. <laughs> and, Great uh, stuff. Also, I will eat all of it, too. Yep. Clean Play Club. Absolutely. And the carry that time, Caden Venrick for the Auburn Trojans here late in the third. The running clock. Another big matchup that we had our eye on this week was Tolono Unity and St. Joseph Ogden. Two 1-0 teams, both ranked squads. Tolono Unity right now in the fourth quarter up, 28-18. Still time in that one, though, Paul. Rochester was really putting it to Springfield High earlier. It was 40-something to nothing. 51-0 right now in the okay. second. Lincoln up 46-0. Mount Carmel up 7-0 on Effingham at halftime, though. That's a bit of a surprise. But to see if we can find a Sacred Heart Griffin score and some of the others. And right now, I'll let you know about tonight's BSA Scouts of the Week. Parker Gillock is an Eagle Scout with Troop 210 in Springfield and an Auburn High School junior who plays on the football team. He spent 10 years in scouting and loves teaching younger students and raising funds for great causes. That's Parker Gillock, an Eagle Scout with Troop 210 in Springfield and an Auburn High School junior. And Caleb Kendall, 16, is an Eagle Scout with Troop 97 in Chatham. He's a junior and a percussionist in the Auburn High School Band. Caleb has spent six years in band, has spent nine years in scouting. Congratulations to tonight's BSA Scouts of the Week, Parker Gillock and Caleb Kendall. Know that SHG was up 7-3 on normal U after one quarter. Have been able to get a score there for the halftime report. Once we do, of course, we'll relay it to you guys. All right. Big time game there for both of those teams looking to make some statements there in the Central State 8. All right. On first and 10 here from the 39. Kern hands off. He's Spun around is the Auburn runner. They're mixing up here and some other players getting some time. That was Noah Hunley running. It looked like Jack Jones in at quarterback as well now for the Auburn squad. Getting a little backup reps, the junior. It's all about getting that experience. It's a good opportunity. Jones looks to the sidelines. Taking a lot of time. Jones fires it. Caught it. About the 37 yard line. Reception at time. Steven Emerson, number 12. 
the junior finding the junior they're getting those reps in so when it comes time for next season they'll already have the camaraderie built and you know that's what it's all about especially in a game like this 49 to 6 running clock second half you just want to get those reps in and now on third and 12 they're gonna have a deep shot here pitches it back and doesn't go anywhere Hunley nowhere to go on the pitch from Jack Jones. They're mixing in all sorts of sides of the playbook tonight. Trying to figure out what works, what doesn't. Pitch deep left. And that's going to do it for us. Here the, here's a look at the third quarter scoring summary brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Thanks to Academy Sports and Outdoors, 49 to 6 for all four sides. Leeds Auburn after three quarters of play. We'll be back with more SEPQ front end rivals in just a minute. Welcome back to SEPQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. I'm Paul Wappel, AJ Gersh, Dante Furco, and the SEPQ Friday Night Rivals crew. We're ready to start the fourth quarter here in Auburn. Moral Forsyth in control, 49 to 6. Fourth and 14 for Auburn. And the Trojans punt. Pretty good punt. Good distance. Really good punt. Thanks to Auburn Trojan roll. And out of bounds at about the 24 yard line. So that's where Moroa Forsyth will start this next drive. And it looks like Ryan Shepard's going to get another set of downs to show what he's got at the quarterback position. And why not? So get some other players with experience. Exposure on Friday Night Rivals as well. I want to thank uh, everybody here at Auburn. Great, great host, gracious host as always. Appreciate all they've done. Always a pleasure to come down to Auburn, Illinois. So 49 to 10, our score. Easy to see why Moreau Forsyth is ranked number one right now. On first down, the Moreau Forsyth Trojan throw it complete. Look at making some moves back and forth. Steven Emerson, number 12. Gets a first down. That's a Brant Professional Agriculture first down. All sorts of reps tonight. Jacoby Lane, the sophomore. He's a big quarterback in the game. 
now number eight. Uh, he's five foot eleven, but that was a nice catch there from Zach Smith. A couple of sophomores connecting here as we kick off the Morrell Forsyth drive in the fourth quarter. First and ten. Auburn Trojans right there. Stuffed at the 34. And tonight at 1015 on ABC, join us for the Friday Night Rivals recap on News Channel 20. One outstanding play from around the area will be named the Midwest Bath Play of the Week. That's tonight at 1015 on News Channel 20. An outstanding play from the area will be named the Midwest Bath Play of the Week. And there will be a lot of choices, I'm sure, from a lot of the games tonight. So and we've had a couple from this game here. Uh, that sidearm touchdown throw from Caden Maurer has got to be up there as well, Paul. Could, could be up for consideration, no doubt about it. Auburn defense right there on this one. 9.40, clock running. Like we said, we'll be at Millican University next week. Decatur St. Teresa's field getting some redone, so... St. Teresa was losing tonight. They play, they'll play Central A&M next Friday. Looking forward to that. Central A&M Raiders on Seth Friday Night Rivals. As am I, Central A&M up by a touchdown against Marshall in the third quarter at the moment, 21 to 14. All right, thank you for the update there. And there's a run there. More foresight continues to mix things up. That's Kendrick Morris with the carry. Nice little dump off there. Just a missed block. Didn't allow the position to open up on the left side. He had some empty field in front of him, though, if he was able to get off that clean. But. And, of course, tonight, AJ, after the game, we'll have the player of the game and the awarding of the SEPCU champions Friday Night Rivals trophy. A lot of great performances tonight. It'll be exciting to see who gets that player of the game? Yes, for sure. And there's a punt. Nobody back for Auburn to receive it. A pretty good punt. Lands at about the 15-yard line. So that's where Auburn will take over. Is 8-15. Clock continues to run. Just a frustrating, frustrating night, obviously, for uh, for Auburn. Uh, AJ didn't. They knew it was a tough task. They had a tough task ahead of them, and. Boy, a couple of turnovers and things turn around, turned against them pretty quickly. Yeah, the floodgates just opened there at some point in the second quarter. They were really holding their own, especially defensively. They were playing absolutely lights out. The secondary was marking their men, and Caden Maurer was struggling to have a, a couple of free seconds not being chased down in the backfield. And then a couple of unfortunate turnovers for the Trojans led to those floodgates opening up. Moral Forsyth is, it's been all them ever since. And the Trojans of Auburn going to the air. Complete. Jack Jones, quarterback, with the pass there. Let's go down to the AJ, or excuse me, Dante Furco for the CASCOM sideline report. CASCOM keeping you connected. Thank you, guys. Trojans. Auburn just got the ball back, and yes, they may be down in this game, but something really important to the Trojans, and we highlighted it in our preview show if you didn't get a chance to watch, their team managers. The team managers are Tucker Minton and Brady Franz, and two guys who mean the world to the team. We talked to a few players this week, and they talked about how important it is to have a team manager on their team. And when I spoke to Tucker, he emphasized that every team should have a team manager because when you have games like last week where it is hot out, in the heat, these guys need to be hydrated. It's important to have a team manager on the side yeah, of that Jones field to keep completely. them hydrated. Another thing to add tonight was senior night. One of those seniors being Tucker Minton. He was honored tonight alongside the rest of the guys on the field. But Coach Gardner emphasized just how great these guys are. They're great human beings on and off the field. So I want to give them their flowers as well tonight. Tucker Minton and Brady Franzen, team manager. Sending it back up to you guys in the booth. Well said, well deserved, uh, Dante. Thank you very much for that incomplete pass there. Auburn couldn't quite hang on to it. It looks like more force that may have jumped where they drawn off. Let's see. The flag is down, and let's see what the officials. It is on Moreau Forsyth, so five yards closer to the end zone for the Auburn Trojans. 5:43 and counting down here in the fourth quarter. 
Those team managers, Paul, are such an unsung hero spot, and, and they mean the world to the guys on the field as well. So big yeah. shout-out. Thank you, Dante, for mentioning that. Yes. Another Brandt professional agriculture first down on that play before. And that play there, Auburn continues to mix it up. Noah Hundley with the carry there. Let's take another look at this one. Hundley getting in the mix there. Nice run. Just a good stretch to the outside. Anytime you can pick up five plus and uh, get around the end, you're going to be a happy running back. Second and three for Auburn. Jones scrambling, looking, looking. Gets it away, complete. The 46 yard line, that was a good play. Yeah, that looked like a veteran quarterback it, out it there. It did. Tides Law with the catch. Look at this. Great pressure there. Coming in is Connor Kelly. Jones scrambling out to the outside, looks back in and sees a man wide open on the sidelines. Nice throw on the run as well, right on the mark. And that's a Brandt Professional Agriculture first down for Auburn. Ball on their own 46 yard line. Jones hands it off to Hunley. Nothing doing. Jones, the likely quarterback of next season. He's a junior right now. He's learning a lot from Talon Kern, who's, a, of course, a very talented man under center. And you see there, Jack Jones can hold his own as well. A couple of nice plays so far on this drive in the past one. Second and nine. For the home team. Look at that. Jones keeps it. Goes wide outside. Good, good play there. That's a little scramble out there. and Stretches the ball out. I'm not sure if he thought the third down marker was the first down marker. but All right. Let, and let you know the national desk. Impartial, fact-based journalism with breaking news from the live desk. Choose America's News Now, the national desk. Weekday mornings at 7 on CW23. On third and eight, the Trojans of Auburn keep it on the ground and maybe get a couple there inside of three minutes left in this one. It's been a quick second half here for this battle of the Trojans. And this running clock shows no signs of stopping. Only stops for injuries, timeouts, and scores. And 2.30 to go. Wonder if they won't go for this fourth and six. Why not? And they are. There's a pass. Complete. I don't think he got the first down. Reception, Hayden Tomlin, the senior. I don't I think he's short. Yeah, he's going to be a couple yards short here as the Moroa Forsyth offense is jogging back onto the field. But a nice play there from Auburn. A couple of good first downs. And you saw some promise there from quarterback Jack Jones replacing starter Talon Kern. Probably a bright, bright look to the future there for Auburn football. 150 left in this one. And we're on four side. We probably just take a knee or two. Yes. A lot of respect for each other. These two schools. Good rivalry and a lot of respect. Great sportsmanship tonight through the whole game, throughout the whole game tonight. Great Sangamo Conference rivals. Looking forward to the years to come, matchups to come between these two schools. Royal Forsyth, it's their time right now. Auburn is a talented young team as well. They're on the way up. Like we said earlier in the night, playoff team last year after missing it for the past two seasons. They're looking to get back there this year. And just because they got blown out tonight doesn't mean that they're not a great team because they do have a very solid shot at making the playoffs. A lot of great, talented teams playmakers on this Auburn Trojan team too. 48 seconds time winding out here in the fourth and Trojan to Forsyth about to snap it just one more time here and 
That'll be all she wrote, I think. And that's going to do it. It's time to wind down here. And Moro Forsyth, the Trojans will move to 2 and 0. Auburn falls to 1 and 1. 49 to 6 will be our final score here. Auburn. And just about everything went well for Moreau Forsyth following that first quarter. We heard it from Coach Justice before. First quarter, awful. It was 6 nothing. Auburn was playing fantastic football, fantastic defense and special teams specifically. But once those floodgates opened, once the turnovers started pouring in, that's what allowed Caden Maurer and, of course, Andre Harden to get the ball rolling. Big night for Mara Forsyth. Like I said, that first quarter was tough for them, and Auburn maybe had a little bit of confidence, but they lost it quickly because of the turnovers and Mara Forsyth, that experience and turnovers, they just they turned it on. Boy, again, they showed why they're the top-ranked team right now in Class 2A in the state of Illinois. No doubt about it, and I wanted to give a special shout-out to the offensive line doing absolute wonders tonight for Moreau Forsyth. Of course, their leader, Andy Munjoy, their center. He's a senior. He plays two sides of the ball. Kane Einer as well is fantastic at left tackle tonight. Yeah, he bounced back from a little injury. And the boys are absolutely hyped here as we roll out into this post-game show. There it is, the trophy. That's what they play for here on Friday Night Rivals. Yeah, and they do. <laughs> and absolutely love it. And it's fun to do it. So, and right now we take a look at the scoring summary brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. 49 to 6, our final score. Moreau Forsyth, like you said, uh, moved to 2 0. Auburn goes to Auburn Falls to 1 1. We'll take a break. Be back with more of Sub Q Friday Night Rivals, the post game show, in just a minute.